Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we are again with another newly released handheld radio. Now this radio is aimed towards the ham radio market and this is the Retivis Islands H1. It's a dual band radio covering from 136 MHz to 174 MHz and then 400 to 520 MHz. Yes, it can transmit on 446 if you're interested. Now it supports both FM and DMR with a power output rated at 6 watts. Now it can also store up to 4,000 memory channels and 500,000 user contacts. Now you get the usual accessories like all the important belt clip, the manual, USB cable and desktop charger. Now you do also get a programming cable in the box too, so that's one thing less you have to buy separately. Now the design of this radio is ever so slightly different compared to others that we've seen before. And what I mean by this is the casing and the buttons. Now they are plastic and not rubberized apart from the keypad like we normally see, but this radio does give me a feeling that I should be using it at home, walking around the house, talking to my friends, and then set it next to my hi-fi stereo system. Now, although the sleek modern design may look different, it still has a durable metal chassis, giving the H1 some weight and profile in the hand. Now, the included battery is rated at 2900 milliamp hour, and that's at 7.4 volts. And according to the serial number sticker here, the battery weighs 120 grams. Now, you will be pleased to know that the battery has a USB-C socket, which if you didn't know, allows you to charge the battery separately from the radio and the desktop charger. Simply plug a USB cable in here and the other end into a power source and then the battery will charge. There's also a little status LED next to that socket. The included desktop charger also has a USB-C socket, so it kind of makes it streamlined and nice and easy. The included antenna covers the full range that this radio will receive, according to that little printed inlay at the base of the antenna. Now on top of the H1, we have this carbon fiber looking pattern along with the antenna socket, which is an SMA male. There's also an orange button for emergency configuration, a stasis LED and two rotary controls. Now the left one is for channel or VFO change and the one on the right is for on and off or volume control. Now notice the style of these knobs. They're quite similar to the side buttons that we'll look at in a moment. Down the right side, a rubber flap exposes a Kenwood style speaker mic socket, which can also be used with a programming cable. Now down the left side, we have those three buttons I mentioned a moment ago. The top and lower buttons are actually function buttons, which can be user programmed for quick recalling your favorite features. Now actually I have mine set for zone up and zone down, and the middle button of course, well, that's the PTT. Now as we turn the radio on, we can see that it's possible to upload your own image to be displayed while the radio is starting up. The screen colors can also be highly configured, including the font color and background color, even separating VFOs or zones with different colors is possible. Now here you can see I've used a black background with white text. The radio is also set to a single VFO mode, so it only shows one VFO at a time. However, you can actually enable dual within the menu and you can have FM on one VFO and DMR on the other. Now the menu itself is quite extensive, allowing you to create contact books, zones, digital and FM channels and set up scanning options. Now there appears to be a lot of options with regards to the display, being able to change brightness along with colors for background and fonts. You can even assign an image as a background which has to be loaded to the radio via that free programming software. The Islands H1 includes a built-in GPS receiver, and this not only provides the user with real-time location data, it can also be used for analog and digital APRS. Now, APRS settings can be configured in the software or within the radio itself. The APRS feature does have manual transmission, automatic transmission interval, or SMART, which means if you're traveling in a vehicle, the radio will sense distance traveled between the last beacon, and then it will just send your APRS transmission at the right intervals. Now, not only does the H1 transmit APRS data, it can also receive it. 
and then display that receive station's details on the screen. Now this wasn't planned, but I managed to capture a friend of mine, M0JSX. It also has a YouTube channel and well worth checking out. Now recording audio transmissions coming from the radio using an external microphone on the camera can sometimes be a bit tricky, especially with environment noise or the type of microphone that's used and of course what you're actually listening to. The quality of someone's transmission could vary from user to user. So here's a couple of brief snippets of audio from FM and also from DMR. I shall wish you 7-3 for now. Enjoy the rest of your day and hopefully we'll work you further down the log from G7LMY listening for final. Golf Sierra, good box trucking. You're going back to standby. A mission 7-3 is to proper uniform to Oscar Fox Truck uniform. Now a quick FM transmission test sounds like this. And although I did have the bandwidth set a little too wide on the SDR replication, you can still hear what it sounds like. This is Mike Zero, Delta Corbett Whiskey, M0 DQW, just testing the analog transmission on the Retivis H1. The Retivis H1, this is Mike Zero, Delta Corbett Whiskey, testing only, testing only. This is uh, Mike Zero, Delta Corbett Whiskey, over. Now I normally use a nice eye power meter for checking power outputs, but today I'll use a V5 RF power meter and this software application. Now the radio is rated at 6 watts for 2 and 70 bands, and for the 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz, the power meter is reading an output of around 5.5 watts. Down on the 2 meter band at 145 megahertz, we see an output power of around 5.8 watts. Now given the tolerances of the 40 dB attenuator and the power meter, I think that's pretty darn close to the specified output power. Now don't worry, we will check the spurious emissions in a moment, and believe me, you do not want to miss those. Now as mentioned earlier, the H1 does come with a programming cable and you can download the software for free from the Retivis website. I know that a lot of newcomers to DMR can find it quite overwhelming. It is one of the most complicated digital modes to program compared to others. But DMR was actually initially designed for commercial systems, whereas the likes of D-Star or Yaesu C4FM are designed for the ham radio market. In my opinion, and after programming many DMR radios using various programming applications, this one is laid out quite well. Could it be better? Yes, it could be. But feeding back your feature request to Retivis is actually taken on board. Well, at least for me they have been. Now you can literally program the whole radio from this one application, apart from the contacts list, which you have to download yourself from websites like Radio ID or even the Retivis website. The H1 does support Talker Alias, meaning if everyone used Talker Alias, you would not need these contacts lists stored on the radio itself. The contact list, if you didn't know, is a person's details, like name and location and call sign, marked against the specific Radio ID. Now that means that when someone is talking via DMR and you're listening to them, their details should show on the screen, including their call sign. Now the software itself would actually need its own video if you wanted to go through each portion of it. So let me know if that's something you would like and I'll try and put a video together. In one of my past videos, it was commented that I was putting too much power into the tiny essay from the radio, which could hinder the result. Now, according to the Tiny SA website, the best input amount would be around minus 25 dB. So this time I've added more attenuators while still running the radio at full power. So on the two meter band at 145 megahertz, these are all the spurious emissions. Well, actually there are none. All we can see here is the fundamental. Up on the 70 centimeter band at around 435 megahertz, we actually see the same results absolutely no harmonics once the tiny SA has settled. Now, whether you are a fan of Retivis or not, you cannot deny that their engineers have done a fantastic job at designing filters that actually work and make this radio legal in the US and the EU. Now, I'll most likely do some more videos on this radio and I already know what else I want to test. But in the meantime, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more of in the next H1 videos. Now, if I've not answered your question in this video about the H1, then please feel free to leave a polite comment asking me to elaborate further. Now, I'll either respond to your message in the comment section 
or I'll include it in the next video on the Retivis Islands H1. Anyway guys, there you go. That's a brief overview and introduction to the brand new Retivis Islands H1 dual band handheld radio that does FM and DMR. Let us know what you think in the comments. Do we really need another handheld? I hear you ask. And believe me, I ask the same question all the time. Until the next video, thanks for watching. Massive shout out to my patrons, YouTube members and subscribers and all of you that watch my videos. Take care of yourselves. See you in the next one.